Hello, my name is Sharon Bovat. I live in Franklin, Tennessee. I used to do relocation. I worked with top executives from most of the major companies that came to Tennessee. I did a lot with Nissan. And when they brought the first executive vice president, Carlos Tavares, they asked me to come in-house to manage the relocation of Carlos Tavares. During that time, former clients of mine told me about the financial the chaos that was going on at Nissan. They were about a billion dollars in debt. Their image was bad. The quality was bad. They were trying to revamp, regroup, but they had major cash flow problems. Catherine Perez, the vice president of purchasing the highest level woman, uh, enjoyed my company. So she took me to parties and took me to events where I got to meet a lot of Nissan executives and I asked some questions. I learned that there was a project happening and, and then they were going to take some taxpayer money and they were asking Congress. And a French man, Dominic Thorman, asked Congress for over a billion dollars. And then I learned from a Nissan employee that that billion dollars was going to be spent on a car with outdated technology. A car that was going to cost about $80,000 each to build. A car that Nissan did not want to succeed. A car that was going to give Nissan green con credentials. A car that was going to be a halo car. A car that was pure fraud. A billion dollars was going to be taken. Nissan could not afford to pay it back. Politicians knew that Nissan had over two, three billion dollars in IDB bond debt with Rutherford County. They had about a half billion dollars Williamson County IDB debt. And with this green technology, they were taking grants and federal taxpayer money, American taxpayer money. I don't know how much the people in the ECD at the time, Matt Kisper and Reagan Farr knew, or Governor Bredesen, but Nissan was committing fraud and I whistle blew about it. And my life has been miserable. In 2009, I told Carlos Tavares I would start a blog, and I was going to show people the problems, and you know what? An IT person from Nissan actually sent me an email and actually helped me with some of my internet security. I, it, Mr. Tavares couldn't stop it. You see, it was Carlos Ghosn that was leading the effort. He had the political contacts, and Carlos Ghosn is the one that was connected to the White House. It, it, it's a long, twisted, complicated story, but it's at the NissanWhistleblower.com. I want you to read it because it's bad. And what's even worse is what happened to me after I whistle blew. Nissan wanted to discredit me. The state needed the jobs and they wanted to discredit me. People at the governor's office that started a solar funding company and were taking money for green programs, they wanted me discredited. What they did to me is they swore out warrants and had me jailed three times. I entered 19 months of courts. I went to the state capitol and twice and I testified. And you know what? The people in the state legislature, they knew. They knew about the fraud and they never asked Nissan because they didn't want to know. It kind of reminds me of something. When I was, when I was 16 years old, I sat on a flight next to a woman. It was my first flight where I, I, I didn't even know what I, what I was doing. I was just going someplace and this woman that sat next to me was a Holocaust survivor. She had a tattoo. She spent the, hot, the whole flight telling me about her experience in the concentration camp and her opinions about the people that lived in the community that didn't say anything. Her opinions about the Jews that helped fix the ovens of the Nazis. Yeah, she thought they were worse than the people that were doing the, the torturing and killings. She actually made some comments that had stuck with me and later in life I went to Dachau, a concentration camp, and I saw the homes. I saw the gate that said work will set you free. And I saw the homes that were a hundred yards away. And those people that lived in that homes during the Holocaust, they could see the smoke come out of the ovens. They didn't say anything. People that are see me through my daughter at my daughter's school, they knew what Nissan was doing. They knew Nissan had me jailed and slandered me, and they said nothing. They feared me. People ignore me. People don't talk to me. People are scared of me.
They're scared of me because I know about fraud. They know it's real. And they don't want to admit it. So inhumanity has happened. I gave up custody of my daughter. I am just surviving. And I'm doing a really the best that I can. I make jokes. I do a website. And I blog every day. And I want my life back. I want respect. Nissan went from 20.9% women in management to 10%. I was literally told at Nissan North America, skirts don't speak.